Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first session of the evening, our first breakout session for Harper Community College's virtual open house. If you were in our previous session, we did have a little bit of a hiccup with webcams, but hopefully they should be working now um, and you should be able to see us. Um, just to reintroduce myself, if you weren't at the first session, my name is Kelly Otis and I'm the Director for Admissions at Harford. This session that you're in right now is gonna focus on the FAFSA and the College Promise. Before we get started, we wanna do a quick poll just to see um, how many of you have done the FAFSA application. So I want to launch that real quick for you. You should be able to see the poll now. Feel free to click your answers. I will give you about 30 seconds and then we will get started. Okay, it's looking like we're in a dead heat, 50% yes, 50% no. I'll give you guys a few more moments if you're just joining us. Uh, we have a poll up seeing if you have completed the FAFSA application, which is the free application for federal student aid yet. Give you a few more moments. All righty, it looks like we're pretty split. So to start off today, as I said, this is gonna focus on FAFSA and College Promise. So we have two guest speakers with us today. We have the Director for Financial Aid, Amy Spinato, and then we have one of our financial aid specialists, Christian Ritchie. I'm going to start it off and pass it over to Amy Spinato, again, the Director for Financial Aid, and she is gonna cover the FAFSA piece of our presentation this evening. So Amy, I am going to pass it over to you. I hit the right button, I apologize. Okay, hello, good evening. There you go. Uh, my name is Amy Spinato, I'm the Director of Financial Aid and we're gonna take a few minutes uh, tonight and we're gonna talk about um, the FAFSA application. Um, thank you for taking the poll, that gives us an idea of who has completed the application. Um, I just wanna actually uh, make one clarifier. Um, it's important if you're going to be attending the fall of 2020 that students are completing the 2020-2021 free application for federal student aid. Right now by going to the FAFSA website you can choose um, from two actual FAFSA applications. So it's really important that you do the 2020-2021 FAFSA application. So I'm going to show my screen. We're going to go through uh, a handful of slides and we're going to get started. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get this in the full screen mode. Okay, so um, the FAFSA. Okay, let me turn off my webcam so you don't see me here. Okay, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid, and I underline free. For those of you who haven't completed the FAFSA yet, it's really important that you're not paying anyone to actually help you in completing the application. Um, it's really important that even if you don't think that you qualify for funding, that you complete it anyway. Even if you, um, the students, are interested in applying for a loan, or even you as a parent um, have an interest in applying for a loan, you do need to do the actual form. Studentaid.gov is the actual website that the Department of Education is asking that um, you actually use to actually apply for the FAFSA. Some of you may uh, be familiar with FAFSA.gov. That is fine because that site actually directs you to studentaid.gov. Uh, we do recommend that you do not use Internet Explorer when you're actually um, completing the FAFSA application. Uh, that will cause you um, some issues. Um, 
Hartford Community College's school code is 002075. So I wanted to point that out. And it's really important that, um, it's, that you do the FAFSA, but you also do need to apply for admission. So um, I do need to, to point that out to you as well. So what's new um, the past two years is actually doing a FAFSA on a mobile device. And so if you haven't done it on your mobile device yet, again, um, you can certainly download the My Student Aid app, um, depending on what type of device you use, either in the Apple Store or Google Play. Again, um, you can certainly um, start the application on the mobile device and finish it on a computer. Again, sometimes students like to start on their mobile device and parents like to complete it on a computer. Um, you can complete, you can save, you can submit the FAFSA. Um, you can also do something called the IRS data retrieval. You can do everything that you can on a computer from a mobile app device. And here is an example of what a screenshot looks of actually completing it on a mobile device. And basically you would um, log in and say whether you were the student, the parent, or if you're the preparer. And basically, um, in order to do an online application, you need to actually sign the FAFSA. So you need to create something called the FSA ID. And so basically this FSA ID is just not used for completing a FAFSA. It's also used for um, students who are actually going to apply for loans and for parents who are gonna apply for loans. And so uh, for dependent students, for which um, for students graduate from high school this year, um, most of these students are considered dependents of their, of, um, their parents. Uh, the student and a parent each need to complete the FSA ID. And only the owner should create the FSA ID. So for example, um, the parent should only create the parent FSA ID and the student should only create their own. It doesn't expire. And so um, it's okay um, for those students that if there's a junior right now, a parent of a junior um, on this presentation, it's okay, you can create an FSA ID now. And here's an example um, of the screen, um, the Department of Education, and there's the website at the bottom of the screen, fs, fsaid.ed.gov. Okay, so basically, again, you can complete the FSA ID, and you can complete the um, FAFSA right away. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about studentaid.gov. That's actually the website now that you use to actually complete the FAFSA. So all the websites above the NSLDS website, the studentloans.gov, the fafsa.gov, you can access all the websites that I just met, I mentioned through studentaid.gov. So again, studentaid.gov is the website that you should be using at this point. So basically, what do you need to complete the FAFSA? Again, you need to know your social security number. You need 2018 tax information for both the student and the parent. That includes W-2 information, which is basically wage information, the federal tax information, asset information, and any untaxed income information. There's something called the IRS data retrieval tool where you can actually transfer information from your tax return directly to the FAFSA. And so when you're actually doing the FAFSA, you're gonna leave the FAFSA and go to the IRS website. And so you'll be notified when you're actually doing this. There is an option to skip the data retrieval tool. However, we would recommend that you actually do the data retrieval. You're less likely to be selected for a process called verification. And if you were at the earlier presentation, uh, we did mention there is some additional processes where sometimes students and parents have to submit additional forms. Um, to avoid that, we certainly recommend that you do the IRS data retrieval tool. So for those students who have not completed a FAFSA yet, we do encourage that you submit any tax information using this data retrieval tool. So again, these are just some screenshots showing you um, that you're leaving um, the FAFSA to do the IRS data retrieval by going to the IRS website. Now this says 2017, but as I mentioned, you're gonna be doing the 2020-2021 FAFSA using 2018 tax information. And you do have to indicate that you're transferring information. And uh, it's real important that when you transfer information that you're not making any changes to the information that you're transferring. So basically after you transfer the information, it's gonna take a couple of days to process and you're gonna receive something uh, via email that's gonna show a number. The number is called the expected family contribution. And basically that's not gonna determine how much you're gonna actually pay. It's gonna be an index that's used at the school to, to determine how much need um, you have for school. So basically your FAFSA is complete. 
what now? So basically, depending on where your student goes to school is going to determine the cost. That ESC or that number on the FAFSA is going to help determine that need. So the cost of attendance consists of a number of things, tuition and fees, uh, some institution, room and board. So you take the top number, which is the cost of attendance, minus that number on the FAFSA, and then you can see that bottom number is the need. So depending on where you attend, you're going to see the need is going to be different. The Department of Education, as we mentioned earlier, selects some applications for verification. Again, this process is used to verify certain information in the FAFSA. Again, you may be selected due to incomplete or conflicting information on the FAFSA. That's basically what verification is. If you're selected, you are required to turn in the documentation. So basically, we're going to be mailing out notifications soon for the fall 2020 year. Our scholarship deadline for um, institutional scholarships is coming um, very closely. May 15th is the deadline. It's not too late to apply. The fall tuition payment due date is July 20th. And then our direct loan request payment, um, excuse me, our federal direct student loan request, um, we'll be accepting those in May. Basically, we have to um, mail out our award notifications. And actually, we're not mailing them this year. We're going to be sending those out um, electronically. So for all of our students that have applied and completed a FAFSA, they're going to receive electronic notification to their LNET accounts. And so basically, they'll receive instructions on um, what next steps they need to complete if they have an interest in a federal direct loan. And again, we encourage students not to borrow if they don't have to. So how to apply for scholarships. For all of our students who have been uh, applied and accepted, you would go to the All About Me tab. Under the quick links on the right-hand side, under Financial Aid, you can see under Scholarships, Apply for Scholarships. And then you would apply for scholarships through AwardSpring. You would sign in with your school account. May 15th is the, our deadline. So again, there still is time. Um, many students have already started the application process and they have not completed the process. Maybe they started the application but have not submitted their essay. Again, we did send out reminders, I believe last Friday, letting people know of their incomplete applications. So there, there are many sources of financial aid, the federal government, the state, which Christian is going to talk about in a few minutes, from colleges, private sources, employers, um, again, the federal government's the, the biggest source of financial aid. The state is very generous. Um, there's lots of funding available. Again, Hartford Community College is very generous. We offer over 150 scholarships. Um, there's outside resources. Um, there's veterans benefits. Um, there's employers and different organizations. And here's some examples of the different type of um, student aid programs, the different need-based and non-need-based programs. Now, not all programs are available um, at every school. Um, for example, we do not offer the TEACH grant um, at Hartford Community College. Again, the TEACH grant is a grant program that would turn into a loan, and that's not something that um, you know, we do participate in. So here are some additional internet searches if you're looking for scholarships, uh, fastweb.com, finaid.org. Um, also, I wanted to point out something called Financial Aid TV, where we offer short videos um, regarding scholarships. It's a really good resource. It puts financial aid in very understandable terms, um, very useful videos. And we would certainly encourage that you take a look at those. Um, again, high school counseling offices and libraries are, um, you know, even online are excellent resources. Uh, your parents' places of employment um, are definitely good resources uh, for you as well. Um, here are some great resources. Again, um, we do need to up update this slide, but even if you go to fafsa.gov, um, again, it would redirect you to the studentaid.gov. There's the link for the FSAID. Again, studentaid.gov is where we would encourage that you go to actually do your FAFSA, uh, the financial aid TV link that I mentioned. Um, there's lots of great information if you follow FAFSA on Twitter and follow Federal Student Aid on Facebook. And there's something um, called the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators, which um, all the financial aid staff at Harvard Community College participates in. Um, there's all sorts of comparisons um, information. Um, if you've applied to more than one institution, that's available. Um, again, I mentioned financial aid TV already. 
Again, here's just a little screenshot about some of the videos that are available. And here's your contact information. I wanted to mention something new that we offer. Um, again, we've had a Facebook page for a couple of years now, but really new since the pandemic is the online chat. And so we do have office hours Monday through Friday. Um, it's 8.30 to 5 um, currently right now during the pandemic, um, Monday through Thursday. And on Fridays, it's 8.30 to 4.30. Um, and again, you can still email us. Um, again, Facebook us. And then the 1-800 number on top is for the, um, the FAFSA people. So you ha if you have a specific question or problem submitting the FAFSA, since the FAFSA form is not a form that we actually um, manage, and we can certainly try to assist you, but if you have a specific technical question when you're completing the FAFSA, you can certainly reach out to them if you need more assistance, but certainly reach out to us because we are certainly here to help you. Hey, Amy, we've got a question here that came in that said, um, my daughter completed the FAFSA last December, but since then I lost my job and our financial situation is different. Is there a way to update financial information? Absolutely. Um, and I believe all of our forms now um, are online. So um, there's something called a professional judgment. And so what we would direct you to do under financial aid process, we have a section now for forms. Um, there is a process um, and you would need to actually submit some information to us. You would need to submit um, some tax information, a personal statement, and um, just proof of underemployment or unemployment. And then we can do a reevaluation potentially. So yes, there is a process and we can certainly discuss that process offline with you and review that form with you. But yes, there is a process. Okay, so um, I can turn this over to Christian now, and I can unshare my screen. I'm going to actually jump in real quick, Amy, before okay. Christian starts. Um, I just wanted to point out, I know we got a question already, but for those that are in the audience, if you have a question that you want to submit to us, we will be taking questions um, throughout and we will do it you know, towards the end as well. Um, on the right hand side, you should have a little control panel type setup um, and there should be a heading that says questions and there's also one called chat. So we will be watching both of those. So as we're going through the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the box um, and then we'll be able to address them later on. Additionally, this whole session is being recorded, just so you know, and will be put on our website over the next few days, which is hartford.edu slash learn more. So the sessions will be there, and we will also include some links as well, since I know that you can't click the video, but we will list the links there for you as well, um, so that way you can access financial aid TV and the other things that Amy pointed out. So I'm gonna pass it over to Christian now. Um, who again is one of our financial aid specialists. Hello everyone, I'm Christian Ritchie. I am a financial aid specialist here at Hartford and I manage the Maryland Community College Promise Scholarship Program. I'm going to talk a little bit about, okay, I don't want to screen my, share my screen just yet. Um, I'm just going to tell you about the program. It is a new program that just started um, in the fall of 2019. Some of you have, may have heard about Free Community College, or some people refer to it as Hogan Scholarship Program, uh, but I just want to go over the criteria for the Maryland Promise because there is some criteria that you have to do to qualify. Uh, the FAFSA needed to be fat filed by March 1st. So if you haven't done that, um, you might have missed this window, but if there's any juniors online or families of juniors, this information will be helpful as you get ready for next year. Give me one moment to just open up my presentation. We're gonna start out with 
this is a screenshot of the Maryland Higher Education Commission's website. And the reason I want to show this is because if you can see to the right, you can sign up for text messages and emails, updates, alerts, so that you can stay up to date on not only the College Promise, but other programs that they offer. Um, you can see the College Promise right here where you can get more information about the eligibility. So I just want to give that website to you starting out before we get into the eligibility for College Promise specifically. So the College Promise Scholarship is it's a need-based grant for eligible middle-income families um, and it's funded by the state of Maryland. And this is some of the eligibility criteria that I mentioned in order to qualify for the scholarship. Again, the FAFSA had to be completed or be completed by March 1st, or MISFA, the Maryland State Financial Aid Application for Undocumented Im Immigrants. Uh, the student needs to have an unweighted GPA of 2.3 in order to qualify, must enroll full-time at your local community college. And the reason it says local is because you do have to attend a community college that is within your, your county to qualify. Um, so, and the only way that you can qualify to go to another community college in another county is if they have a program, a specific program that Harford does not offer. Uh, so, so there's some special circumstances and exceptions that are made in that case but you do need to be a full-time student. If you're a Hartford County resident, you need to be attending Hartford Community College in most cases. The income requirements, as you see listed on the screen, there, there is an income requirement to qualify, 100,000 for single parent households, 150,000 or less for two parent households. And I have some more criteria. Uh, some newly added uh, changes to the program is that it's not only for certificate and associate degree programs, but there are some non-credit uh, programs, sequence programs, and apprenticeship programs that qualify for Promise. So um, that was newly added. You also could not have already earned your bachelor's degree or an associate's degree to qualify. And also, if you're eligible and the state contacts you, you and you have to submit documentation, they do have a firm deadline where you have to turn in certain information to them by June 15th before, before you're actually officially, they let us know if you're eligible based on you meeting the, their criteria and submitting the documents to them. So that's important since it's coming up. If somebody has already, if there's people on here that have done their FAFSA by March 1st, or maybe you've received notification from the Maryland Higher Education Commission, uh, make sure you read the emails so you can see what they're asking for um, and what they need to continue to process you. I wanted to talk about some changes. Um, I'm excited to announce certain changes that are being made to the program starting in the fall, these are proposed changes to the program. Originally, it was considered a last dollar program, meaning you would only qualify for this scholarship after any other scholarships or aid that you received. So it's, it's proposed to remove that requirement um, so that it's gonna open it up to more students so more students can be eligible. Um, that's, that's supposed to change. And also it, in the beginning, you would have had to have graduated within two years, either with a high school, Maryland high school diploma or a GED. And now that requirement is going away as well. So again, just expanding the um, eligibility for Maryland residents and people to qualify for the scholarship uh, doesn't only have to be within two years of graduating. And lastly, there was a service obligation where if you finished, once you finish this with your program and you received the scholarship, you would have had to commit to working in Maryland full time for every year that you received the grant. Some people did it, didn't like the service obligation. So I think that's why uh, it's been, that's gonna be changed and removed from the program. Um, so yes, just giving you the website again, if you wanna 
take a picture or note down these websites. We have more information about College Promise on our website. We have an email address where you can email your specific questions or feel, feel, feel free to ask questions today. Um, we can answer, give you the most up-to-date information, but there's still some things going on on the legislative side. So we might not have a guarantee 100% answer for you, but we can get back to you and follow up with you. Uh, but even with the college closure, we are still receiving questions to our email address. So you can email us directly at any time. Um, during normal business hours with your questions about College Promise or FAFSA, um, and we can help you and explain things to you there. And if there's any questions coming through, you guys can. All right, thank you, Christian. All righty, so, just looking at what we have here, um, I do have one question. I will direct that to Amy. Um, Amy, if a student wanted to take classes this upcoming summer, which FAFSA should they fill out? If a student is going to attend the summer session, they need to complete the 2019-2020 FAFSA, and it's not too late to complete that application. They can still go online to studentaid.gov and complete that application. Great, thank you. And I'll also do one follow up with you, Amy, just uh, piggybacking off something that was mentioned in our last session, just in case we have some new viewers. Um, are there any type of financial aid events coming up that the students can participate in? In the fall, um, and actually each semester, we do a variety of lit uh, financial literacy events. Um, we do something called Money Mondays, where we will actually assist students with money management basics, learning about smart borrowing, all about loans, about Maryland state aid, like the session that Christian just talked about, how to complete a FAFSA application, how to make investments, how to understand credit, protect their identity, um, basic um, money management type things. Um, we also do um, online courses, so even if they don't want to do face-to-face, -face, um, and, and right now we can't do face-to-face, -face, um, online lessons such as budgeting basics um, through a course called Cash Course. So um, we do have a variety of events um, that we do do in financial literacy, and so um, we will continue with those in the fall, and we do do these types of events um, each semester. Great. Thank you. Christian, I have a question for you. Um, is there a way that students are able to work on campus and get money? Um, yes, they can work through what's called the Federal Work Study Program. And that program, um, again, your eligibility is determined based on your FAFSA information, of course, your financial need, but it is an opportunity to work on campus um, you're basically you're earning a grant. The grant is what's going to be paying you. You get to choose different opportunities on campus. Um, so we don't select where you work. You can choose which area you would like to work in and gain some work experience in. Um, so yes, there are opportunities for that. Uh, you do need to apply for FAFSA and contact us and let us know that you're eligible so we can get you in and go through orientation and explain the program and how it works and how to get paid and how to look for jobs. Great, awesome, thank you. And since I have you on real quick, um, just one more question that I, um, I wanted to throw out there. For, for students who might feel that their parents or guardians make too much money and they wouldn't qualify for FAFSA, what do you recommend that they do? Um, I recommend uh, inquire with us, fill out the FAFSA if you can to the best of your ability, and then still inquire and see what things that you could qualify for. Because uh, a lot of students assume that they don't qualify for like maybe a federal Pell Grant, but there's so many other institutional and state grant opportunities that are out there. And if you don't ask or see if you qualify, you, you just won't know. So I recommend to, if you're not comfortable doing the FAFSA right away, reach out to us so we can maybe explain more and show you what opportunities we have for you that you might qualify for, for other reasons, not just income of your household. Great, thank you. 
Amy, I'm going to turn to you. Um, we have a question. What if the student doesn't have any credit? Can they still get a loan? Student loans do not require a credit check. So yes, um, loans are definitely um, an opportunity for our students. Again, we don't encourage loan borrowing, but if it's the only way that a student's going to be able to attend school, uh, that's certainly what loans are there for. And that's another reason why um, everyone should do a FAFSA application, um, because that is the only way they're going to get a student loan is if they actually do a FAFSA application. Uh, the only way that student can get a federal work study job is if they do a FAFSA application. So students can't be considered for that work study job or federal student loan um, without that FAFSA form. Great, thank you. And since I have you, I'm going to ask you one other question. Um, can you just go over the deadlines again for FAFSA? Sure. Um, again, the, the FAFSA deadline for this current school year, if you, um, you asked a question earlier about summer. So it's not too late to apply for summer, um, but you, you certainly need to get that in as soon as possible. Our last summer session uh, for the 1920 year starts on July 1. Um, so we certainly want you to see an application get in uh, pretty quickly. Um, again, the priority date for 2021 was March 1st. However, you have until spring of next year to, to complete the FAFSA. So it's certainly not too late. Um, we certainly would love to see you actually, you know, do that FAFSA application prior to classes starting, but you certainly can, you know, make payment arrangements, get on a payment plan and do a FAFSA after you start. Um, but in order for you to secure your classes, you would need to make payment arrangements if you don't have financial aid in place, um, if, if, you have a, if you don't have payment in place. So again, um, it's not too late to start the process for either year. Okay, great. And for current high school seniors or students who are going to be seniors in the fall in September of 2020, when does the FAFSA application open up for them for the year after they graduate high school? Sure, October 1. October 1 is when the FAFSA is going to open up for the 21-22 school year. Great, thank you. All right, we have another question that came in. Um, Amy, I have you on the line, so if you want to jump in, that's okay. fine. If Christian wants to jump in. Um, if a student is a veteran, can they receive financial aid? Sure. All they have to do is complete the financial aid form, the FAFSA. Again, that's the foundation for all financial aid is completing the FAFSA form, so they certainly can. Great. Thank you. All right, last call for our attendees. If you have any questions, I know that we have some of you here. Um, there is a question area on the right-hand side in that control panel area. There's also a chat box as well. Um, we have a few more moments. If you have a question, feel free to throw it in there. Um, Amy and Christian, is there anything else that you want the attendees to know about financial aid or about your office specifically and the services that you have? I'm not sure if I mentioned already about Financial Aid TV. Um, we have a lots of short videos that are available that explain financial aid in very understandable terms. Um, we have a very robust um, web page. And so we would encourage that our students, um, prospective students and current students take a look. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a Facebook page where we post information. We newly have online chat because of the pandemic. Um, we do have that available. So um, we still answer emails, but we certainly are available to chat with you um, during office hours. So we um, would like to you know, answer your questions. Um, please apply for scholarships. There's money out there to assist our students in going to school. There's still time to apply. Uh, May 15th is around the corner. It's not, not too late. Uh, so we certainly um, would encourage that. Um, if you received an email from the state of Maryland to create something called an MD CAPS account, it is legitimate. Uh, please create that account. Very important. Christian, do you have anything to add about that? I do. I want to add um, with the MD CAPS account and when you sign when you sign up for alerts. Uh, it's important even right now while we are we're working remotely um, that students should watch their email for updates from us whether it's from Harford admissions 
of the Maryland Higher Education Commission. You watch your email so you don't miss out on any deadlines or opportunities because we're communicating mostly right now with you via email. Um, so I wanted to just point that out because I know some, some of the younger students coming in might not know how important it is to watch the email or parents too. Um, and there's also helpful resources I want to mention on YouTube. YouTube has videos that will walk you through the FAFSA and show you and explain some things too. So if you're familiar with YouTube, YouTube Federal Student Aid, YouTube the FAFSA, how to complete the FAFSA. If you, I know we're not able to assist you physically right now, but there's videos that can assist and explain things as well. We know that there are a lot of families that send their students to Hartford Community College. So in the past, you're used to receiving lots of information in the mail through us. Unfortunately, we have not been able to send things in the mail. So things have been sent electronically. So for those of you who have already completed the FAFSA, because 50% of the people online have already completed the FAFSA, and if you've applied for admission, you're going to receive notification electronically when we do send out our award uh, offers. They're going to be sent electronic. So please be aware that um, if you receive that admissions notification to set up that um, account, please make sure you do that because the notification is going to be sent to Alnet. So um, please make sure you get used to doing that. And then um, our marketing department did an excellent job in setting up a site, harford.edu slash learn more. There's great information for all of our departments, but certainly we work in financial aid. So we want you to look at the financial aid page. Uh, there's lots of um, useful information. Um, so we certainly um, we want you to reach out if you have questions. That, that's what we're here for. We're sorry that we're um, in this situation and we're not here to, to serve you face to face, uh, but we would love to chat with you and email with you and answer your questions. Awesome. And another question that I saw as we were chatting, um, are we able to have or is a student able to have financial aid if they are registered for non-credit courses? There are, um, you have to be a degree seeking student in order to have federal financial aid. All right. There are some scholarships and aid programs, scholarship kind of programs for workforce development. And those you can find from harford.edu slash learn more and go to the workforce development page. All righty. Well, I think that's all of our questions, everyone. So we, with non-credit, they can direct you. Oh, I got a little delay there. <laughs> all righty. Well, I think that is all of our questions. So I want to thank everyone okay. for being with us tonight and taking some time out of their evening to listen to us and ask us questions. Um, a question did come through, and I just want to reiterate it for everyone. If you're looking to get more information or follow up on something personal with your account, you can reach out to both admissions and financial aid through email. Admissions is going to be admissions at harford.edu. If you have financial aid questions, that includes scholarships, FAFSA, College Promise, anything like that, you can reach out to financial aid at finaid, which is spelled F-I-N-A-I-D, at harford.edu. We have staff that monitor both of those accounts and we can get back to you ASAP and answer any questions that you may have. Um, so again, thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening. If you're waiting to go into the next session, which is the dual enrollment session, which starts at 6.30, um, we will be having that using the same exact link that you use to log into this event. So you will need to log out and then re-log back in, and we'll be starting that dual enrollment session in a little less than 20 minutes now. So hopefully we'll see you there. Any other questions, again, reach out to us through email. But thank you so much for taking the time this evening to chat with us, and we hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.